Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. Today we are continuing with the set A chapter 1 and looking forward to add more questions to our discussion from the chapter 1 itself on different topics and see how exactly we can tackle them with the best tips and tricks involved in that. So for today we have the next question is number four which of the following is an advantage of having the whole team responsible for quality now we indeed had the last question in the previous tutorial talking about the whole team approach and they asked you what is one among them which is the overall responsibility as per the whole team approach and the answer was the quality of the product itself is the everyone's responsibility, not just alone testers. So here we are talking about why or what is the advantage of having the whole team responsible for quality. <coughs> So we have got four options with us. Of course, option A says companies no longer need to recruit, recruit and train software testing specialists. Okay, so there are two things which we need to basically do at these point of times or in these sort of questions, which is number one, of course, I need to talk about uh, what is the question and what is the context, right? As soon as you read the question, you need to start establishing the answers related to it in your mind without looking at the options. Okay, because if you start reading the options, it's easy to get diverted or deviated from the exact answer. So you need to first start establishing that what exactly are they trying to ask you? One, they're telling you about the responsibility of quality, which is the question. But at the same time, we do have some context about what is the responsibility of quality for the whole team and who should be responsible for it in terms of performing it, right? So these are two different things. A tester is always responsible to perform testing within the team, though we say that it is the whole team. But the taking the ownership on defining quality of the product is everyone's responsibility. That means a developer should take care of making sure that the code has minimal number of defects. Uh, architect should make sure that there are no issues related to architecture when the testing happens, right? So they, if they improve, the testing improves altogether. So put together, we are talking about two different things. That is, one is the cushion and second is the context, right? So in that opinion, of course, the whole story I told you is to say that option A is incorrect. Companies no longer need to recruit and train software testing specialists. Of course, you need them because responsibilities are different from the role. B, the test automation tasks are now the responsibility of the development team instead of the test team. Okay, so development team is a common word given to the combination of architects, developers, and testers. Okay, it's not limited to the developers. So test team is still taking the ownership on performing the test cases execution and testing the system, but taking overall responsibility is of course the overall team and this is not one of the advantages to say that I can just ask developers to do the testing. Well, we're just losing that biasing between the two people to find out the more and different effects. <laughs> so B is also ruled out. We're talking about option C, the role barriers are eliminated and team members contribute to project success based on their unique skills and perspective. Looks awesomely fine. This is what we are looking forward to have in a team, combining, put together architects, developers, and testers that everyone looks forward to support each other. And that's what is Agile trying to convey and looks the best, you know, the right answer at this point of time. But let's cross check with option D as well. Project costs are lower because the need for a specialized test team is eliminated. Again, we don't eliminate test team or test engineers just because we are saying the responsibility of the quality is everyone's, not just testers alone. Okay, so in that context put together, the right answer here is C, the role barriers are eliminated and the team members contribute to project success based on their unique skills and perspective to take the overall ownership on the quality of the product. Well, moving on to the next question, the next question is number five, which two of the following statements are true? Now, that's one thing which I want to highlight here. Many people go ahead and select two options here. No, here they're saying we have got four options or like four statements for you out of which, which is the right options or the true, true statements, right? So we have only four options. Please be extra cautious when they ask you to select two cross check if you have four options or five options. You have to select two options in the answer set only when you have five options given to you. As far as you have four options, only one has to be selected. 
right? So here they are talking about the statements which are four on the top, right? So let's start reading these statements here. Early feedback gives the developers more time to develop new system features because they spend less time reworking on features expected in a given iteration. Yeah, that's a very tricky statement. Sometimes I, in fact, you know, don't get it. <laughs> Early feedback gives the developers more time to develop new system features okay early early feedback oh okay got it early feedback that means early feedback first of all is something which we are consistently getting from the customers or interacting and collaborating with the business representative by uh, presenting the demo of the you know work items what you prepare in each sprint and then you get early frequent feedback from them so early feedback gives the developers more time to develop new system features because they spend less time reworking. See, you know, these are two contradicting things, right? Because if you are coming and presenting to me and if I, during my feedback, I can have positive feedback or I can have negative feedback. Positive feedback is, hey, I'm happy with what you built in this particular sprint. Negative means, hey, can you change this? Can you do this? Can you do that? So feedbacks can be of two types, right? So it does not really hold good as a standard statement that it is always true that the feedbacks do not ask you to do any kind of rework. So developers, of course, implement features that are requested by the business and are part of an iteration. If they complete their task, they will help out with the other tasks assigned to the iterations. But, you know, that's not something what we really talk about the, you know, the reworking part. So they don't spend less time. They do spend more time doing reworking features expected in a given iteration so that's not something which is true talking about statement number two early feedback enables agile teams to deliver features with the highest business value first because the customer maintain customers maintain focus on features with the highest system value i think we just uh, indeed we discussed in our first chapter that the highest priority is customer satisfaction by delivering the highest value first and that's where we do one of the ceremonies in agile including scrum that is the backlog redefining or grooming, right? Where we keep prioritizing our backlog uh, every week so that we have the highest prioritized item for our next sprint to be picked up, right? So yes, that looks one of the statement which is valid when it comes to the early and frequent feedback, which you know the customer can tell me and I can reprioritize my backlog to meet the highest value first. Let's look at three early feedback reduces cost because it decreases the amount of time needed for system testing. Um, very tricky statement, system testing is minimal in Agile, so many people will get diverted to this. Uh, we spend more time in unit testing and integrations compared to system. So people quite often think that yes, it's absolutely true, but there may be more testing required due to frequent changes. So system testing could be seen from another angle where we can say that regression point of view, as in when a simple unit is modified, as in when an interface is modified, the system testing has greater scope of regressions, right? So in that context, we would say that, yeah, if there are frequent changes, then amount of time needed for system testing can be more. It's not a standard statement, which is valid in all single scenario, all different scenarios, right? So it would be in some cases, but not every every time or every case. So three can be ruled out, but let's cross check with the four. Early feedback makes it more likely that the system built is what the customer wanted because they are given the opportunity to make changes throughout the iterations. Absolutely true. Because of course, uh, early feedback is all about interacting with the uh, customers getting to know what exactly they are looking forward to and we are building up according to their needs by accepting their feedbacks and changes and we accommodate all that as per their need and expectations and prioritizations so in that context all we are making at the end of the day is what the customer wants so customer certainly indicates if requirements are missed or misinterpreted and modify functionality if they desire so at the end of the day this early feedback mechanism helps the team to develop, deliver what they are actually looking forward to. So put together, the right answer here is C, two and four, where we are saying we are delivering highest business value first, and second, we are finally making a product what the customer wants, are the two right statements. 
Well, moving on to the next question, that is number six, which of the following is a benefit of the Agile process, promoting early and frequent feedback? Now, benefit of early and frequent feedback. Right. Indeed, some of the things we just discussed in the previous question. So you must be in the same flavor right now and it will be easy to answer. But don't forget, these are just sample questions. Right. We are trying to help you understand different types of questions to come to the conclusion with right answer. OK, so you need to learn every single question in a way that what did you take away from here? Right. So we got four options here as well, talking about the benefits of having early and frequent feedback. A total number of defects found during the project is much higher than on traditional software development projects such as waterfall now again now we're talking about early and frequent feedback and they're talking about the number of defects being identified in a methodology now the same number of defects you know can be found using any software development process because that's not a matrix which determines that how early and frequent feedback would help me however the traditional model did not involve any sort of early and frequent feedback. So all they're trying to say in a very twisted way that, hey, is that just because of early and frequent feedback that Agile is getting more defects than the traditional model? So people may think, yeah, that looks absolutely correct. Yeah, of course, that would be one of the reason. The answer is no, it's not necessary. The number of defects is a matrix and you can find any number of defects in any development model irrespective of Agile or Waterfall, V model, Spiral, Prototype. But when it comes to early and frequent feedback, we get to know what exactly customer wants. Customer is not testing, right? They're not performing acceptance test or UAD and then telling you that, hey, this is what I wanted, right? They are mainly telling you what is their priority, what is their expectations, what is their requirement. They're not telling you what is wrong or what is not working. That is still the testing job. So please be, you know, that level of understanding is needed here to not get diverted, right? Early and frequent defect is a metric which is independent of uh, interaction with the customers. And moreover, defects is all about finding issues in what we have developed. Early and frequent feedback will tell you what is the expectation, the requirement. Then developers develops it. And what if the developers go wrong? You can find any number of defects in traditional or Agile, that is totally different, right? So A can be ruled out here. Talking about B, there is a less rework because customers see the product regularly. Come on, that's right opposite, right? We just discussed that in the previous question. So clarifying customer features request early and regularly throughout development, making it more likely that the key features will be available for the customers to use earlier and the product will be better reflecting what the customer wants. And that's one of the benefits, certainly. Uh, this reduces, oh yeah, exactly. My justifications are sometimes contradicting with what I said earlier, right? Instead of saying this is what looks correct, I said wrong way, right? So yes, there is less rework because customers see the product regularly and less rework from the perspective of that you don't really have to be, you know, amending everything. Sometimes you just have a discussion with a customer and they have early and frequent feedback to you that, hey, in down the line, this is what I want to see. Down the line, this is what I want to see. The prioritization and expectations are very, very uh, detailed discussed and the team as well ahead with the preparation so that when it comes to the sprint, they pick up what the customer has defined. So B looks uh, pretty much okay. C it is easy to determine the developer who introduces the most defects when integrating code. And now that's not something what we should measure, first of all. It's not recommended that you should discriminate based on the number of defects and identify the developer to penalize him. Sounds like a punishment. So Agile does not single out individuals. It is about always the whole team, right? So that's a very, very weird statement to be picked up. D, there's enough time to complete all features scheduled for a given iteration. Um, early and frequent feedback, enough time. Uh, there may not be enough time to complete all the features for a given iteration, but the Agile process does not allow the team to focus on those features that have the highest business value first, right? So in that context, what we say is it's not necessary that just because you have early and frequent feedback, you would have all you know, features what you promise to be delivered in a sprint, 100% completed, 
in that context today 99 percent projects or 99 percent agile teams would deliver everything as per the committed number of points which is not true right at least 95 percent of the teams still have something pending at the end of the sprint though we have early and frequent feedback right so anyways concluding on this the very right answer for this particular question is b there is less rework because customers see the product regularly and guide you nourish you with the required expectations and the end goals what they have with the product so that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below i'm always there to address your queries and answer them well till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning